Hello, Recovering Perfectionists. It's Claire Riley. Welcome to the show today. I am so, so excited that I finally get to speak to the gorgeous Naomi Finlay on the show today. We've been um, back and forth and we've had to reschedule quite a few times for the last couple of months. So I'm super excited to finally get to chat to Naomi. Now, you might have heard her name around um, before. She is Australia's renovations, renovation royalty. Um, who works with hundreds of homeowners around the company, around the country, helping them to create healthy, wealthy, beautiful spaces. She's the founder of NomiFindlay.com and the International Institute of Home Staging. Super exciting. And I know you run um, beautiful retreats in Bali for your industry as well, Naomi. So lots of exciting stuff going on there. Um, and you're a mum to four beautiful kids, so it keeps you super busy. Um, Naomi was voted Oz Mumpreneur's Rising Star of the Year, and it's also been featured as a design expert on shows like Changing Rooms Australia and The Home Team. So welcome. It's so nice to have this beautiful woman on my show today. Oh, that's very, very kind. I'm pumped <laughs> to be here. And you're right. This is going to be amazing because we have tried so many times <laughs> to connect. Exactly. It's one of those things where it all, everything just got a bit too hard a few too many times for many different reasons. And Absolutely. Uh, we sort of just like the universe but we're telling here, us we're here a now. Time. Exactly. And I'm in my new place and you've all settled and everything else as well. So, uh, Perfect. so I guess in, um, to start with Naomi, can you just fill us in a little bit on your story and how you kind of came to be where you're at now with your business and the work that you do and having been on telly and all of that awesome stuff, give us a bit of a snapshot about what got you to this spot. Oh, absolutely. It's actually a random story. I was the ultimate rule follower. You know, I went to school, went to uni, did something that my parents thought would be amazing. I was actually in the world of radiation oncology for 15 years. So I worked in medical science um, you know, did my PhD and I was continually searching for the thing that would float my boat and the thing that, you know, I'd go, when I get my PhD, I'll be happy. When I have my second baby, I'll be happy. When I, you know, all those. And then eventually one day I went, I actually just need to do what I love to be happy. And what I loved was everything property and everything interiors and renovating. And so I literally decided to throw it all in. Um, not throw it in, make a change. I decided to make a big change. So over a couple <laughs> of years, I retrained. Um, so I did my design qualification whilst I was finishing off my PhD um, and lecturing. And then I ended up with my own bricks and mortar um, design, renovation and styling business, which I had for 10 years. Um, I sold that last year because I found that the work I was doing, I could reach many more people with my courses, with speaking, with TV, with our, our video tutorials, if I worked on mass. And so that's what kind of ended me up in the exact position I am now. Mm. I kind of ended up um, combining my love of teaching, which once I left the hospital system, I, I then taught at university medical science. Um, so I combined my love of teaching and my love of interiors and renovating and construction and ended up being who I am now. Oh, so perfect. It's so, I really love all these stories and there's so many people who I've spoken to and who I've worked with who have the similar sort of thing where they've gotten, they've done the, the good girl thing and the you know, yes. perfectionist thing with the school and the uni and the, the, the job yes. and blah, blah, blah. And they're like, I'm always waiting for that next thing. Um, always constantly hey hit the nail on the head was going like I just realized I just needed to do things that I like doing in order to be happy it sounds and so simple but it's such a hard place to get it to is especially. and you know even in business sometimes um, you can find yourself in a position where you think you're doing what makes you happy yeah as well and it was interesting last year like I'm so blessed that I get to do what I love every day but I've gone even to the next level of saying um, it was the beginning of last year, I literally made the decision that I will do, I will only do things that fill my heart with joy on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been such an interesting journey. I made that commitment to do that for 12 months. Mm -hmm. And what ended up happening at the end of the last year is I'm like, wow, I actually, you know, it, it's worked for me. And mm -hmm. it, it's, it's such an important thing to say, what is that one thing that fills my heart? And then how can I create wealth from that and you know my own version of wealth because wealth is so much more than money yeah totally um and i think 
I think when you, I was having a conversation with someone about this the other day, it all sort of comes down to that authenticity, but you've got to take the time to work out what it is that you actually want rather than continuously striving for the thing that you think you want. Or, or the thing that you see on Instagram. Wanted. Exactly. <laughs> So, so what, happens, true. what happens when you like, say when you were studying and you were finishing your PhD and that sort of thing, and you realized that that probably wasn't going to be the, the be all and end all, how do you yes. kind of keep going in the moment when you're in that transition phase between, Oh, this oh. isn't quite it, but I need to pay the bills versus that thing over there. I know that that's what I want and not getting demotivated by either one. How do you kind of... It's actually a really push-pull, hey. There's mm. an epic tension I find in that time. It took me around two to three years to transition um, to be able to leave, um, you know, the university system yeah. um, where I was lecturing and um, completely be cool with my own business. And so it takes time during that time. And I guess one of the things that it was really important for me is having a plan. If I had a plan that I knew, like I'm a massive believer in following most rules. So for example, after my second child, I decided I'd run a marathon. I've never run before. <laughs> and um, so I found a 12 month program online and I was like, well, if I do what it tells me to do every single day for 12 months, I'll be okay. And it's just that faith in having a plan because I am, I'm a planner. Mm. And so I did the same with transitioning businesses. I'm like, right, so I need to transition. Let me have a plan. And then I know that if every single week or every single day I have a plan and I follow it and I'll get to where I want to go, then I'm going to be okay. Yeah. So I think in those moments of, oh, but I really hate this or, mm. oh, but I just want to be there. <laughs> I think that um, what can actually happen is, you, it's very easy to lose faith and it's very easy to lose focus. Yeah. And I think people that maybe there's a few people that can tell you awesome stories of when they woke up one morning and never went back to work. And <laughs> I envy that. Um, but I don't know that many people that have pulled it off. Right. Um, and so, cause I think that there is the logistics, like we were just talking about lovely. There's logistics of, we have children, we have yeah. mouths to feed, we have, <laughs> you know, stuff that needs attending to. And so I, I'm probably a bit more of a safety Susan that I was like, what? Well, if I have a plan and in my down moments when I'm really frustrated, I just revisit my plan, revisit my goal and go, you know, you can do it. You've got six months left or you can yeah. do it. This is all for a reason. You know, yeah, I think girl if you can my own heart. I, I, oh, I really? Like I'm Virgo, and I often just explain like what I do is I'm just a professional Virgo. I'm a textbook Virgo. I'm like a professional Virgo. I'm a professional Virgo. I like to plan things. I make lists of all the lists I want to make, um, and all that. Sort of I thing. love and it. Sometimes it in the past, especially, it's definitely been um, a bit of a crutch, if not a thing that sort of held me back. But now I've learned a bit more balance and it's more like a safety net for me. It's the same sort of thing. And I often teach it that way when I'm talking about, especially like things like content planning. And I'm not a fan of going, let's plan out your entire content for the next 12 months and don't st um, stray from it. Only yes. I like, know it's not what it's about. If you get struck by inspiration and you want to write something that's not in your plan, freaking go and do it. Like there's a reason. hundred percent. Come to hundred percent. It's having the safety net of going, oh, I can't be bothered. I don't feel like it. This is shit. It's never going to work. But then you've yes. got a plan to go back to. You don't have to count on, on getting inspired. You don't have to plan on having the best motivation. You don't have to plan on, you have to bank on having all the other ducks lined up because you've got a bit of a, like a fallback plan. That's kind of what it's planning is about for me. So true. I was talking to, um, I was talking to some of my mentoring clients. We did like a, we had a start of the year kind of call to get it at my mentoring clients sort of, you know, in a really happy spot. And um, in the design industry, this was, and we we're talking about, um, you know, we're all brilliant at setting our intentions. Like everyone can be like, I'm going to do this year and I'm doing this this year. I'm like, that is amazing. But what are the, what's the scaffold you're going to put around yeah. yourself yeah. for the wet, the days that it all goes to rot? Yeah. Like what, what are you going to put around yourself where it might be, as you've said, it might be like 10 blogs that are already written. So those weeks that you're like, I've got nothing. You're like, it's okay. The wheels cool. haven't fallen off. It's okay. <laughs> and so, yeah, I'm with you. I think that it doesn't mean that you have to stick to it like you wouldn't believe, but mm. it just gives you that support and that structure. Because exactly. as mums, yeah. I find, or and for non-mums or people caring for their, their sisters, their brothers, their mums and their dads, yeah. like there are other things that happen in life. Exactly. And so we have to, uh, we, can't, we can't work 
worried that life will interrupt our planning. Like that's not what it's meant to be about. Yeah. Amen, girlfriend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's All meant right. to be about life. It's meant to be about those moments where mm. your child says, but, mum, I really need you today. And mm. you go, like, I've got a teenage girl and teenage boy and then a nine and a seven-year-old. Mm. And there's some days that my daughter goes, mum, I really need to be with you today. And I'll be like, that's cool, babe. Let's do this then. Yeah. You know, and that's, that, like, that's when you have those scaffolds. That's when you have the things that you're like, it's good. I have a plan and I'm on track and everything's going to be okay. I can be here and now. Yep. And even planning for the flexibility, like I find I talk about, I talk about this a lot with um, startups, especially, and I was definitely guilty of it when I first started every business. This is about my third business. <laughs> um, and this is the one that sticks because it's actually my gift and that sort of thing. But um, every time I started a business, I fell into the trap of turning it into a job. Like, I, yes, even when I was, I was like, right, I've got to get up and get dressed and be sitting at my desk, having had breakfast and my third coffee and I have to be wearing this and I have to switch on and I have to work until lunchtime and then take my lunch break. And, you know, you get into that. Robotic it's so true. And you're like, hang on a minute. Didn't I start this so that I didn't have to do that shit anymore? We're programmed <laughs> for that though. We're totally programmed yeah. for that. You know, where we, yeah. And, and sometimes I have to give myself a smack and go, really? Like, yeah. I'm, I, I think it's very easy <laughs> to fall into that. It is. It is. And it's, it's almost like, like I plan in time to do nothing otherwise I'll just keep going so I that is so good like every fourth Friday is I, I used to call it my nothing day but I've recently changed it to be called my freedom day and sometimes on my freedom day I feel like working so I work sometimes I feel yes. like out half sleeping eating chips and watching Netflix and that's what I do and sometimes I want to go and get a massage and that's what I do like it's my it's day doing what you need have a break or not have a break but I get to choose so it means there's no client stuff and there's you know all that, that is so good plan I have planning days like I plan to I plan when I'm going to do my plan and I plan when absolutely I plan. So I plan because you have to be in a different space up. hey yeah, you have totally. to be in a different space to plan yeah oh absolutely absolutely Right, so you are the interiors and space queen, obviously, and I really want to have a bit of a chat about, um, especially for a lot of the listeners and a lot of women that probably you and I both work with, we work from yep. home. Um, 100%. Make our home space productive and happy for work and for home, and how do you blend those spaces? Like I used to have a desk um, with that was all set up. It was still in the living area, but it was a very established place I've just moved into a smaller place and my office is literally one of those Ikea trolleys and my kitchen table again so how do I like how do people who are in that sort of space carve out space or is it all about blending or like how do we how just how do we do that stuff you know what a lot of that depends on how you work best so a lot of that depends on whether you know your visual kinesthetic a lot of it depends on whether you like things around you for comfort or whether you're a minimal person yeah. Um, because that will all affect what I think is really important is that we understand what, um, I guess makes us most efficient, most productive and most creative scientifically. There's a pile of proof. Like if you look at, I, I call it space medicine, um, that the spaces around us actually have the ability to affect, affect us on a cellular level. So if you go all the way back to the cells, our cells actually, um, in layman's terms, our cells actually morph into different cells depending on who are around them, as in what other cells are around them. And so in, on a cellular level, our cells are affected by their environment. And that is like on a macro level, we're affected by our environment. And so you can actually, there's an epic amount of scientific, medical and education research that basically links the environments around us and the small, there's a few small things that we can do in our environments that can actually increase. I think one of the statistics was it can increase our productivity by 16% and our creativity by 17%, which I don't know about you. If I could snap my fingers and make that happen just because I could, that would totally be on my priority as a startup or as a small business. Oh, absolutely. And we can do that in our environments. There are so many really simple, cool things that you can do. One of the biggest ones is connecting your environment with nature. So depending on where you are, 
This might be positioning your desk to have a view. This might be making sure that you have plants at eye line. It might be um, using natural timbers in your desk accessories. Is it like a million different ways you could do it, but by connecting your space or your vision or your environment with nature, that's one of the biggest ways that you can actually increase your wellness inside of a space. Amazing. It makes so much sense. And, um, you know, every time you look at beautiful indoor pictures, I like I'm a bit of a Pinterest fan, especially. For oh, I love Pinterest. stuff. And I was showing someone the other day what my ideal bedroom would look like. And they all looked like the rainforest. Oh, <laughs> and that, that is I'm absolutely amazing. And I, I just, like, they all had probably over the top indoor plants in them. But I'm like, hmm, even I was saying like, hang on a minute. What, <laughs> what was I thinking when I did yeah. this? And you know, there are the obvious things like the plants are air purifying. So the old fashioned mother-in-law's tongue, which is actually called Sansevieria, it has been voted the number one air purifying plant in the world, um, which is just amazing. And you cannot kill it. Like one it is, of those right next to me right now. Yes, it good is nothing. absolutely impossible. So good choice. Okay. I think Na I think it was actually NASA. Uh, I think the stats came out maybe 18 months ago. NASA did a study on it, um, which I find hilarious. Uh -huh. um, so, yeah, like I think there's so many things that you can do in your environment to connect it with nature, to use textures, to use patterns. And that is all to increase productivity, efficiency, creativity. And in some cases, when you're dealing with people, creating an environment that's absolutely teeming with space medicine can increase your effectiveness and your ability to build relationships in these spaces. So it's, especially if you're working from home, it can be like, you know, in, when I was young, I would have called it a double bunger. You know, it can be a double bunger, like that you get to not only create yourself a productive workspace, but when your family come home, when your partner come home, comes home or your work or your flatmates come home, you've also created a space that's harmonious mm. from the perspective of communicating and living the best version of you. Oh, I've got goosebumps everywhere. It's such a, like, I'm such a homebody. And until I moved up here to the coast a few weeks ago, I like, I've almost become an, an outdoorsy person overnight, but I'm definitely an, an indoorsy person. And my space is so important to me. And so it's been this beautiful opportunity to fill my space with things that I love and that are about me. And That's my kids. so and good. For the first time in 15 years, I've bought new furniture and it's all things that just, oh my God, lights me up. And I just sit here sometimes and I look around and I'm like, oh my God, I love this space, but I'm also really proud of it. And I, you know, there's some little things on a branding perspective, because I do a lot of Facebook lives and webinars and all that sort of thing. So I'm on video quite a bit, quite a bit. Yeah, at my desk. So I've kind of had things from my old place that are still in my background for that for the kind of consistency and that sort of thing. But it just feels like it, it is a totally different energy that I want to spend time in and I want to work from and I want people to see and I want people to be here and, and all that sort of thing. So it's just a totally different energy that means like that I show up with as well, given what And do you know what's so interesting? So I do a lot of work with entrepreneurs. I'm actually speaking at an event um, soon in regard to not only is it about how we feel, it's about how the people we bring into the space feel. Mm. So whether it's your backdrop, whether it's the environment that's behind you when you're videoing or on live or on your socials or whether it's your clients that you're bringing into that space, that the environment will affect how they perceive you and how they perceive the experience mm. with you. It is not about spray painting everything white. <laughs> um, before everyone gets all carried away with a spray gun. It is not about the spray painting everything white. For example, I've spent the last week at this most amazing property in the Hunter Valley. Um, there's a mastermind running here on the weekend and I've spent the entire week doing what I call a quick and dirty reno and styling on it purely to make sure that these mastermind people have the most epic sensory experience of their life. Wow. Um, and, you know, that is taking the whole concept of environment to that next level. And, you know, the entrepreneur that um, has engaged me to do this is totally on board with if, um, you know, if her participants are in an amazing um, on-brand, on-vision space for what she wants to achieve for the weekend, then 
it is going to make it so much more successful. Mm, absolutely. I, I, I really love the idea. And I work, um, as, as we talked about before, I run retreats and the space yeah. is so important as so part important. of the marketing, but also in the productivity of, of that sort of thing. And I was actually just talking to a client of mine this morning who's running a retreat of her own yeah. um, in Hobart. And when we were looking at her sales page, I assumed that the photos on there were just um, stock photos. But when I asked her, they were actually the place. And I was like, oh, my God. It, that is so good. Card. Like, if I, if I knew that that's, like, it's such a big part of the decision making when you can actually see the physical space that you're going to be in. And for me, I like, so I like to know the details. Like, what sort of bed am I going to be sleeping in? Is it a quilt or is it a blanket? Like, I'm, I'm kind of finished uh. with things like that. <laughs> but that. It does make I a like, big impact to the so overall experience, doesn't it? I'm oh, so it good, absolutely yeah. does. Like I, um, I will often, you know, you're talking about planning to plan. I actually plan my spaces to plan in. So I seek out mm. amazing spaces around the country to go plan in mm. because I know that my productivity and my creativity is epically affected by the space that I'm in. Yeah. And so I remove myself from my space and I remove myself from the space where my staff are or my team are, our, mm. our team together. And I take myself to a space where I know that I can be crazy ass productive. And so mm. I will like stalk, you know, Airbnbs and luxury stays and <laughs> amazing new hotels and all these things yeah. to go, that is where I am going to be at my best. I love it. And so do you think like for, because I think a lot of people, this will be um, probably like um, either subconsciously they know it, but they may, might not have thought about it consciously or heard it, you know, from people like you, that sort of thing before. Is there a way to kind of um, get clear on, on what that looks like for you? Is it a personality profiling kind of thing or is it just a, like sitting down and consciously thinking like what sort of space am I more productive or creative in or do I like well, stuff around me or do I need nothing around me? Like what? For me, it's about emotion. Yeah. So... Um, I p pay attention now that you, I guess, are aware of how, um, uh, how spaces can emotionally affect you. Like literally the, the data is phenomenal. So certain spaces can increase our heart rate. It can change our cognitive, um, functioning ability. It can actually make us think clearer. It can change our blood pressure. Like, I mean, it is really physiologically powerful. Spaces are very powerful. And so um, it's important to just start to take note as you go around to hotels or to restaurants or, and I know this sounds really girly, but I want you to take note of the moments where you go, <gasps> because that's the moment that something's connected with you. And look at what it is. Mm. Like, is it a plant that the foliage just makes you want to touch it? Mm. I don't know about you. I touch plants all mm. the time I and I often talk to them. <laughs> I um, get attached to my yes. plantees. <laughs> yeah. And so it's about um, looking at, and you'll, a lot of the way to do it is also to start to recognize what you really don't like. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. so I know that I cannot work in a space that has yellow or orange in it. Mm -hmm. I can't yellow and orange make me agitated. It feels bright. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm under a spotlight. Um, and so I know that if I looked at a hotel that had orange or yellow in it to go plan in, I just wouldn't bother. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a bit the you same know, with red and purple. I just can't. They just, yeah. They red and purple me. are the same yeah. for me. I cannot yeah. do anything with red and purple. Yeah. And so it's stressful. about <laughs> starting to understand what, floats your boat it'd be a bit like so whether it's a guy or a girl going oh I love a guy or a girl with dark hair oh I love someone with right. um, olive skin like you didn't just wake up one morning and know what type of person you're attracted to mm. you know it took time it yep. took time to work out you know what what type of personality traits in a partner or what type of, um, you know, visual traits in a partner yeah, yeah. floated your boat. You didn't just wake up and know that. Yeah, it's really interesting. Actually, something that I started doing, and I've always done it, my mum's always been interested in, um, well, she's always talked about, you know, what she would do and how she would design a house if she was going to build her own house or something like that. And yes. she was so specific and she knew that it had to have an atrium inside and it had to have this, that and the other. And so I think I've always been quite aware. So I've often had lists, just ongoing lists of things that I definitely do want and definitely don't want. And 
and that sort of thing. And I add to it every now and then because I'll go into a place and be like, oh gosh, it's all so heavy in here. Right. A hundred percent. Have tall ceilings or it needs to have, um, um, I don't know, windows at the front or something like that. But you know, when people say it's, it's northwest facing or something, I'm like, that means nothing to me. I have no idea what the context is. I get that there's, you know, certain shaped and certain facing houses you are and aren't supposed to live in, blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't make sense. But the things that do make sense is like I need it to have the tall ceilings and it has to have big windows and it has to have a, like the kitchen sink, not over that side of the kitchen. That's a stupid place to put a kitchen sink or whatever. I guess. <laughs> that placement of that sort of thing. Um, That's gold. But yeah, it is probably, I think, like you said, just taking a bit of, um, a bit of notice time. and being conscious about what is and isn't okay. So tell me then, if there was someone, because I'm sure a lot of us are in this position where doing a whole renovation or a home makeover or throwing everything out and starting again isn't an option. But it's not really an option for many or, people, you know, to be honest true. with you. <laughs> so what are some of the hacks? Like are you, is it an idea of maybe like cleaning out a space and then just adding things back in that you do love or? I Absolutely. Do you know one of the things you can do? We collect stuff. We collect so much stuff all the time or people give us stuff. And sometimes we think we don't like it but a lot of the times it could be because of what's next to it everything is relative you know a, um, a tall person doesn't look tall when they're standing next to someone else who is tall and so <laughs> it's real it's true though yeah. you know and then you put them next to me and you go wow you're right. so tall <laughs> so I it's really important if you've got a pile of stuff that you used to like Maybe not sure if you still like it, but don't really want to be throwing out the baby in the bathwater altogether. I would totally clear the space and I would clear all your accessories into onto your dining room table. And then all your accessories, all of your art, all of your cushions, even from around the whole house. Mm. And then treat your dining table like it's a shopping centre. Mm -hmm. um, so then you go set up your desk where you need to be or your client space or depending what industry you're in and then go shopping on your dining table and choose the things that all of a sudden when they're in a different space or they're out of a cupboard or you hated them three years ago but now you're like, oh, I've seen them around. They're kind of cool. Like I don't know about you guys. I'm actually sitting here sewing like 1950s lamps Um I'm sewing new fabric onto them because the lamps, if I was to buy lamps this size now, they'd be about $600 per lamp. They're those huge, ridiculous wow. kind of 60s lamps. So a lot of things that we've had in the cupboard for a while or mum gave us or dad gave us or your sister gave you, uh, some of them when you get them back out of the cupboard seem way less offensive. Right. Um, so first I would look for things that you loved as is. So on your dining table, I go, well, I need a lamp and okay, cool. I like that one as is. So you can take that in and then you go down to cool. Well, the next step is I like that, but so it might be, I like that, but I want to put a different shade on it. I like that, but I need to paint the base. I like that, but only if I cut the top off. Yeah. And so you, you're kind of going down the hierarchy of likeness. <laughs> And so that way you'll find that most of the time, if you already have some interior stuff at home, you should technically be able to get, I reckon, 50% through a styling of a space with what you have in the rest of your house. Yeah, yeah. I must and then you few... get to top it up. You're right, you go. I was saying, and then you get to top it up. You go, well, hey, I save so much money because I have used 50% of stuff I already had in the house. And it might even be a desk from a different room that you hadn't looked at because it was covered in magazines for years. And then you go, wow, I can now go spend a little bit of money um, because I have saved so much money. Yeah. And then you can then use the high-low idea of styling. So it's just like high-low in fashion. I ethically believe in high-low in interiors. So, for example, I've just done up this amazing set of lounges um, for a client. And so the lounges cost me $50. But the end, I refinished them, but the upholstery that I got redone on them cost me a thousand. And that's okay because the land has only cost me 50. And so you can totally use high low principle all throughout your house. Mm. Go buy a pile of stuff from Kmart and then get and Target and op shops and then go get an amazing piece of art from a local artist that you love. Mm. And you will be absolutely blown away at how it comes together. Oh, I love that idea so much. I'm so into 
secondhand furniture and that sort of thing, but then trying to tailor it. So I've just bought these two beautiful Ikea, just those basic cube shelves, but I'm going to get a beautiful yes. piece of oak to put on the top of it to just fancy it up and maybe some legs or something. So Amazing. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I absolutely love it because I'm a total thrift as well and I love getting a bargain, but I don't want it to look like everyone else's place as well. So I think that's actually super important what you've just said because a lot of people think that if you want to customize, it has to be something old. Mm. I just uh, I just made over a pile of Kmart stools, like with recycled fabric. Mm. I posted and and they now look like the most amazing stools, but they're twenty dollars, twenty dollars wow. from Kmart. Yeah. So you don't just have to recycle; you yeah. can actually upcycle. So mm. you can buy new and customize, just like what you were talking about. Love it. And there's so many great, um, I mean, there's uh, things I've come across again on Pinterest that uh, like Ikea hacks. So they've, they've put stuff from Ikea and then they've changed it up or they've added this or they've taken away or they've painted or added these beautiful decals or whatever. Like there's so many things that you can do that My don't gosh, have yes. to cross the earth, right? No. But you can put your own spin on it and make it fit your space and your needs. And Absolutely. Super. And your brand. And your brand. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I was going to say before when you were talking about like shopping what you already own, I, I, my best friend has got quite an eye for making spaces look good and I had showed her all these dreamy places and I wanted it, everything colour coordinated and she's like, oh my gosh, please, that's so not you. Um, ah. <laughs> places like my linen press, which was overflowing with beautiful linen, but because it wasn't on a bed or on the couch, it was just shoved away. So mm -hmm. she got them all out and then made these beautiful kind of like folded them up and put them in the bookshelf where books had been. But there was this beautiful texture and color and things that Absolutely. I bought overseas and things that, you know, meant so much to me that had just been shoved in the cupboard. And now I could see them every, every single day. Like, Little and like that, that makes you feel good, hey? Yeah, it's just it was such a big game changer rather than having just practical stuff out and about. Get your beautiful stuff out. And like I started it's really using important. glasses. Like, yes, of, everyday you know, luxury, hey? You no? Know? Everyday yeah. luxury. There's no use keeping that special candle for a day where you think you might appreciate the smell better. <laughs> there is no better day to smell that candle than today. So light the candle. Oh, totally. I, when I was moving, I, I did something similar. I went around the house and got all my candles and all the incense and all the smelly things. And I was determined not to pack these 50 or 60 candles that I had. Oh my gosh. So I'm not even joking. It was ridiculous. So for the last eight weeks in my last house, my house has never smelled so good because I was burning oh, candles bet. in every room all day, every day. And when they were done, they went in the bin and it was done. But I absolutely loved it. And I so I'm good. going to store candles. If I buy a candle or I'm given one, it's getting burnt that day. It's <laughs> so true. Because we do do that though. We go, oh my God, it smells so nice. I don't want to burn it in case it runs oh, out. Oh, it's like, oh. oh my gosh, life's so present. I don't want to live it in case something happens. <laughs> exactly. You know? I, I don't want to enjoy myself too much. So I bet not right. burn that beautiful thing. I, that's right. Because if I enjoy myself too much, maybe it will all break. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What the hell is with that? I don't get it. Let's I think stop doing that shit. Uh, I know. And I, you know what? I'm so not hanging it on our parents. Um, but, but I think it's a generational thing. You know, like, I think, it's, I think it's a generational thing. I was very much bought up. But don't you enjoy that too much? Because you never know when it will end, you know? And I, I think it takes time to unlearn that. Yeah, totally. And it's a, it's a waste thing and it's an abundance thing. And it's a, it well, is. a $60 candle. You can't just burn that for yourself. That needs You're to burning be money. Burning money. <laughs> totally. Oh, it's, it is. And it is. It's such a thing. And I mean, so many of these things that were and still are luxury items are so much more accessible. So, you know, the thing oh, they are to be a hundred dollars and now you can get them for 20 bucks and they're still good quality, but because of obviously, you know, the industry and whatnot, <laughs> Yes. Things like that, that you can actually have the nice things. And if it breaks, who frigging cares? Like, what's the point of having your crystal in a box, never to be touched? A hundred percent. What the hell? Use them and, and enjoy them. And, and like, you're worth it. And all those lovely slogans. And imagine that awesome Jesus. story that you're going to be able to tell about the day that you got the crystal out of the box and you smashed it immediately. <laughs> like, that's going to be one of the best Such Christmas amazing. table stories yep, ever. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I'm such a fan, such a big fan of, of just filling your space with things that you love. So Absolutely. last question, it probably won't yes. be the last question, but the last thing that I really want to get from you or understand is, um, and we've kind of touched on it a little bit, if you're doing things um, 
in your space, whether it's client facing and they're coming into your home or it's just yep. um, the background or anything like that. Um, from a branding point of view, do you have any kind of do's or don'ts for what to have like on screen, for example? Look, I think it's really important that there's a couple of things. I think that whatever you have behind you needs to be on brand for you. It needs to be, if it's, in, and, and within reason, not outrageously polarizing, you'll obviously attract people that are attracted to your brand. Um, but I'm always conscious of something that's too polarizing or offensive. Um, but I guess for me, one of the things from a business perspective is that I like there to be a little bit of variety um, in the backdrop as long as it stays on brand because there's nothing worse than having something that's absolutely immaculately everything in the same space. So a lot of people might use um, backdrops that are printed, which is great and it's super easy. However, there is the element of then all of a sudden, especially if you're doing videos, um, when your backdrop changes, everyone goes, oh, that must be the new video and that one must be the old video. You automatically date your content right. because yeah. they see a difference. So for me, it's important that you have a branded look and feel, but you change your backdrop up mm. or how it's arranged so that no one's like, oh, yeah, that's a backdrop that she had in 2018. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's the shoot that she did in 2020. Right. Oh, yeah. You know, because yeah. they, otherwise, because some of our content that you would be doing and people would be doing has decades worth of longevity in it. Sure. Like yeah. literally. Yeah. And don't let your brand at the time, um, you know, I guess don't let it date you. It doesn't mm. need to date you. We date ourselves enough as we age. You know, we, don't, <laughs> so we do not need our interiors or our backdrops to do the same. Um, but I would always think about, I would think about space medicine. I would think about structure. I would think about clear space um, so that they have the ability to focus on you. Yeah. Um, so all those sorts of things really. Yeah, yeah awesome. I think the probably... Um, to sum it up, is like the feel should be consistent. So if you're exactly like simplified and fresh and clean and modern, then that always needs to look simple, fresh, clean, and modern. Not necessarily it doesn't even exactly yes. every single time, and yes. it doesn't even need to be the same location. Yeah. yeah. So if you're working from home, guys, um, find three spots with good light, and it might be different light at different times a day. Um, so you might be like, cool, I can shoot here or interview here um, in the morning and I could shoot here and interview here at midday. And, oh, if I'm going to do an early afternoon interview, it needs to be in this space for great light. Yeah. And then go, cool, so these are for the next six months, these are my three filming spots or these are my three interview spots that I'm going to be using in my house. Mm. Love it. I love it. And I also I think there's, um, like you said, with that consistency, like you're the focal point. So you don't need heaps of busy stuff going on in the background that's confusing or more eye-catching or whatever. It's, 100%. More, of a, it's more of a clarity and, and positioning sort of thing rather than... Yep, it's a, it's a look and feel. They've yeah. got to have the look and feel you want to give them. They need to receive space medicine by looking around you. Mm. Um, and it needs to be, um, you know, it needs to be... The emotion. When, so when I talk to people about interiors, I often say, what's the emotion that you want to feel when you win walk into this space? Yeah. Or I'll say, what are the five words you want your best friend to say when they walk in? Yeah. And that will, and you know, someone will say special or welcoming or, and so you need to think about what you want your audience to feel mm. when they turn their video on. What is the one thing? Excited, exhilarated, inspired, comforted. Like, what is it? What is mm, the thing? Yeah. And then start to build your interiors around that. Yeah. Oh, I've got goosebumps on my goosebumps. I love this conversation so much. I'm just sitting here, like, looking back and forth around my space going, yeah, yep, I reckon. I mean, I'm good with this. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. good. Yeah, Even I'm just not... doing an audit. Do it your own yeah, little audit, it. just like you're yeah. doing. Yeah. Oh, so I love it. True. And often, and it, I mean, it's not even like a, okay, I'm done now. I'll move on with my life. It's a constant Never. Thing, like you're always tweaking and fiddling and I'm always like, Oh, I could go a new cushion or I'm done with that throw rug. It's boring. Or that throw rug looks too wintry now or that lamp. A hundred percent. Moldy. <laughs> and and you go. know, when you, when you go between seasons, remember not to throw out, keep it till the next season um, because get it back out of your cupboard, shop your cupboard. 
um, yeah. when you go to refresh for the season and then it allows you to have more funds to spend on the thing that you want to. Oh, so, so true. I'm so in love with this conversation. I want to keep talking. It is so much fun. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much, Naomi, for, for coming a on. Pleasure. Chat. How can we find you? Because I'm sure there's going to be lots of people who are hanging on every single word and just want some more love from you and some more details. Oh, bless. So how can Thank we, you. How can we find you? So you can find me on Instagram. So at Naomi Findlay official or head over to the website. So it's Naomi Findlay.com. So it is a tricky surname, F-I-N-D-L-A-Y. Um, but yes, Head, head over there and you will find me quite easily. Super easy. Thank you. And all the links will be in the show notes as well. Thank you so much. This is perfect timing for someone for me to blow my dead grass. <laughs> 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 perfect as we speak. timing. So that's perfect timing. And um, yeah, thank you again so much. It's been absolutely gorgeous having a chat with you. I've loved you it. You too. And um, I'm sure you'll probably see, I'll probably be tagging you with like, hey, look, look what I've done. Look at this. Look at this. That is so <laughs> cool. Please do. Tag me in all your amazingness. I will. Thank you, Naomi. I'll talk to you. You're really welcome, soon. lovely. Bye. Bye.